Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to start with um, the next part. In the last lesson, you have already seen uh, the ligands, how to write down the formula, recognizing the type of ligands, monodentate, bidentate, polydentate. You are also familiar with the term coordination number, which indicates the number of dative bonds formed between the ligands and the metal center ion. Uh, you know the shape, you know the bond angle. Today, we're going to look at ligand exchange. So if we look at the learning objective, uh, we are to explain qualitatively, <coughs> sorry, that ligand exchange can occur. Uh, we are going to look at the complexes of copper and cobalt only, okay? The ligands that we are going to look at is water, ammonia, hydroxide, and the chloride ions. Bearing in mind water and ammonia are both neutral, hydroxide and chloride ions are negatively charged with a charge of minus one. Uh, for hydroxide and chloride ions. Use the complexes uh, as examples of ligand exchange affecting the color observed. So when we look at this qualitative exchange, we want to look at the uh, change in color, change in nature, whether it is in aqueous or precipitate. We also need to know things like it's change in coordination number, if there is any. Um, equation, you need to learn the equation because sometimes they let you, they want you to write the equation. Later on, we will see if we have enough time, we will have a look at the question together. Uh, that's why I asked you to prepare your exercise 28.1 beforehand so that you can see what kind of question that they can ask you, okay? The theory is pretty descriptive, okay? Um, not much explanation, mostly you just have to memorize things. Uh, but when you see the style or the type of question that they can ask you, then only um, it helps you to uh, understand what you should remember from this section, okay? <clears throat> Okay, it says that I've been signed out. I don't know what happened. Are you still with me? Okay. Hold on, yeah. Okay, right. So before we look at the ligand exchange, ligand exchange is like substitution of ligands, okay? Uh, ligands in a complex can be exchanged wholly or partially. Wholly means all uh, the ligands in your original uh, complex ion are being replaced or partially, that means maybe only two out of the six ligands uh, will be replaced. This is called a substitution reaction. Exchange of ligands between ammonia and water occurs without change in coordination number. <clears throat> so uh, because ammonia and water is the same size, so that means if you replace uh, water with ammonia, copper with water ligands, it has a coordination number of six, and ammonia will also have a coordination number of six. But if the ligands are of different size, then of course coordination number will change. So ammonia is much smaller than chloride. Ammonia would have a coordination number of six, whereas 
chloride will have a coordination number of four. You will see this later. So the bigger the size of the ligand, the less number uh, of this ligand you can uh, put around the metal center ion. Ligand exchange forms a new complex that is more stable than the original one. Okay, so when we exchange the ligands, we don't just simply exchange them because we want to, okay? The new complex ion being formed uh, when we do the ligand exchange is because uh, it is a more stable complex ion, okay? If it's a less stable complex ion, then it wouldn't be formed. There will be no ligand exchange happening. Okay, so the first um, example that we're going to look at is uh, copper ion, okay? So when we look at copper ion, Cu2 plus, before this, before you learn about complex ion, we write copper 2 plus as just Cu2 plus aqueous, right? Actually, what this Cu2 plus aqueous means is that the copper ion, Okay, so this one is um, our standard way of writing down the aqueous copper ion. But what it actually means is that there are six water molecules arranging themselves in an octahedral shape around the copper two plus ions <clears throat> uh, to make a complex ion. Okay, so actually copper two plus in aqueous solution exists with this six water molecules arranged octahedrally, okay? And this gives copper two plus ions its color, which is a blue solution. If you remember from your qualitative analysis um, practical, usually when you get a blue solution, the first hint, okay, is that it may be copper, right? But you cannot just confirm it by uh, simply looking at the color. You also need to do some uh, additional uh, tests, okay? Right, so what happens if we add um, concentrated hydrochloric acid to our copper 2 plus ion? So copper 2 plus here, we can be talking about copper sulfate, copper nitrate. Um, these are the common, common ones, okay? So when we write down copper sulfate, CuSO4, it is made up of Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. So this Cu2 plus is actually this complex ion, okay? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> right, <clears throat> so we're going to look at what happens when we add hydrochloric acid, okay? So the addition of concentrated hydrochloric acid drop by drop will substitute the water ligands with chloride ligands, okay? So here's um, the uh, diagram, a drawing of the complex ion. Initially, you have copper two plus with six water ligands. As you add hydrochloric acid, it's the chloride ions acting as a ligand that will exchange um, or replace your water ligands in the original molecule. And because chloride is bigger than water molecules, it can only accommodate four chloride ligands, okay? So uh, there's not enough space for six chloride ligands to arrange themselves around the copper two plus ions. Uh, the, the pure reason for this is because of the size, okay? So you can see that there's only four chloride ligands um, arranged around the metal center ion. And if you look at the equation, so you started with six water ligands and then four chloride ligands will kick out the six chloride ligands sorry, we'll kick out the six water ligands, okay? So how do you, how do we write down the formula if the equation is not given to you in the exam? So remember that Cu plus 4Cl, what is the overall charge, okay? Since the copper is 2 plus originally, 
right? I hope you remember how to work this out. You add up the charge or the oxidation of copper and the ligands, it should be equal to the overall charge. So since water is neutral, so water would be zero. So the charge of copper is the same as the charge of the overall complex ion in this case, okay? So with four chloride ions, um, how do we know that it's uh, two minus, okay? So this is how I work this out. I know that copper is plus two, all right? This is not an oxidation reaction. So the oxidation state of copper doesn't change. Plus chloride is negatively charged and there are four of them. So that should give me an overall charge of complex ion plus two minus four to become minus two, okay? That's why you get CuCl4, two minus. It's really easy to balance out the equation, okay? You don't have to stress. Since you kick out six water molecules, you will produce six water molecules as your other product, okay? The observation, <clears throat> um, the observation that you should see is copper two plus is a blue solution. Chloride is colorless, just like your hydrochloric acid is colorless. Your water is colorless, okay? Copper chloride, CuCl4 two minus, okay, is a yellow solution, okay? It is extremely important for you to know the color and the nature, whether it's a solution or whether it's a solid, okay? So please make sure, don't just write down uh, yellow or blue, make sure you write down the solution as well. Okay. What else do I want to add here? Now this, um, sorry, this, uh, the name of this ion is not copper chloride, it's tetra, tetra stands for four, chloro, where the chlorine ligand is, cuprate, that's for copper, two ion, okay? But you don't have to worry about the naming because um, they will not, they will very unlikely ask you to name um, the complex ion. This reaction or equation is actually a reversible reaction, okay? You can add that in, right? It is a reversible reaction. Why do I mention that it's an, uh, a, a reversible reaction? As I mentioned just now, um, the formation depends on uh, which one is more stable, okay? So if you start from copper to plus and you end with copper uh, tetrachlorocuprate ion, it must mean that this tetrachlorocuprate ion is a stable complex, okay? However, if we add water to my yellow solution, what will happen? Since it is a reversible reaction, addition of water will favor the reverse reaction. Agree? Looking at Lichetilia's principle, okay? So if I add water to my yellow solution, my yellow solution will turn back to blue, okay? So it depends on what we add. If we add chloride, forward reaction favors, blue goes to yellow. If we add water, Reverse, solution, uh, reverse reaction happens. So the yellow solution turns blue. Okay, the change in coordination number, as you should already know from the diagram, is it goes from coordination number six to coordination number four. And the shape is also um, quite obvious to you. In the complex ion with the coordination number six, the shape is octahedral. And for the, for the product, where the coordination number is four, the shape is tetrahedral.
Okay, so you must remember that chloride ion, uh, chloride ligand is bigger than water molecule. That's why only less number of chloride can fit around the metal center ion. Okay, that's for, that's when you add hydrochloric acid. What if we add um, ammonia? Okay, we add ammonia, we add dropwise and then in excess, right? Oh, okay. I just realized that my slides is not... Uh, eh, that's cobalt. Okay. Before we move on to the uh, next one, what happens if I add ammonia instead? to this copper, uh, tetra copper chlorate, okay? So we're still looking at CuCl4 to minus. <clears throat> Notice that in your notes, I've got that Cl in bracket. Actually, that bracket is uh, optional, right? As a matter of fact, you don't need to write down bracket because it's just a single atom, okay? You use bracket for ligands that contains more than one atom like H2O um, and H3, okay? If it's just Cl or fluorine, F, or iodide, I, then you don't have to put them in bracket. Okay, so what happens if I add ammonia? Will there be any changes, okay? As a matter of fact, yes, because ammonia can replace the chloride ion, okay? So ammonia, in a way you can see it as ammonia can kick out the chloride ion, okay? But only four ammonia can kick out the chloride ions. And you may ask, why do I need water? Because ammonia is of the same size as water. So its coordination numbers should be six. However, for copper, only four molecules of ammonia can arrange itself around the metal center. So you imagine NH3, 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 and NH3, okay? So this four ammonia replaces the four chloride ligands in your CuCl4 to minus. Right? Since ammonia is the same size of water, ammonia would want to have a coordination number of six. All right? But there's only four of them. How do we make it have a coordination number of six? Is by the addition of water. Okay? So this is how a Cu um, NH34. H2O2 and two plus complex ion looks like, okay? So that H2O in a way is just like, um, you know, extra ligands to make this complex ion have a coordination number of six, okay? So the balancing the equation is again, not so complicated, although it looks long, you need four ammonia ligands in the complex. So you will add four ammonia. You need two water molecules just to complete the coordination number so that it becomes six. So you add two water molecules. In the product, it forms the complex. That's why you have NH3, four, and h 20 Two, the chloride ligands that you have kicked out will just be for Cl minus, okay? So that means the color change that you would observe here is CuCl4 will always be yellow solution as we have looked in the previous part. Ammonia colorless, water is colorless. This complex with four ammonia molecules and two water molecules is, it appears as a deep 
blue solution. Okay, so, so far you know the color of copper with six water molecules, which is a pale blue solution, copper with four chloride ligands, which is a yellow solution, and copper with four ammonia ligands, which is a deep blue solution. Chloride is colorless, just like how you would have hydrochloric acid to be colorless, okay? <clears throat> right, next, we are going to look at the addition of sodium hydroxide followed by concentrated ammonia. Okay, so this next reaction is actually something that you have done in practical session. Okay, so you see here we're adding sodium hydroxide. Uh, if I show you your qualitative analysis notes, you look at copper. Okay, we are adding uh, sodium hydroxide dropwise usually. Okay, so copper 2 plus, we add sodium hydroxide drop by drop, we get a pale blue precipitate. So we want to know what is that pale blue precipitate. Okay, and in, in excess, it is insoluble. So there is no use adding excess sodium hydroxide. Instead, we're going to add excess ammonia. Okay, the same case happens when you add ammonia drop by drop, you will see pale blue precipitate. This pale blue precipitate that you see is the same thing, okay? It's the same substance, which we will look at shortly. And then in excess, it dissolves, okay? Soluble in excess, and it gives the dark blue solution. So we want to know what is it that gives us the pale blue precipitate and what gives us the dark blue solution. This is what we're looking at here, okay? So when copper two plus, same thing, right? Copper two plus and copper with six water molecules, they are the same thing, is added with sodium hydroxide followed by concentrated ammonia, okay? So we'll look at concentrated, concentrated ammonia later on. So copper two plus, as you know, is a blue solution. When we add sodium hydroxide drop by drop, only two hydroxide ligands will substitute the water ligands. Okay, how do we know only two? This is something that you have to remember. You have to memorize. Just like the ammonia previously, only four will substitute whatever ligand. Okay, so in this case, for hydroxide, only two hydroxide ligands will substitute any two of the water molecules, okay? Whether you want to replace this and this or this and this, it doesn't matter, okay? So what you form is copper with two hydroxide ligands, okay? And then you may ask, um, what about the four other water molecules? Well, because they are not substituted, okay, they just stay around the complex ion so that the coordination number again stays at six, okay? So not all six water molecules will be replaced by the hydroxide ions, only two. You notice that this is a solid, okay? And it also doesn't have an overall charge. It's neutral. How do we work that out? Because copper plus two OH plus four H2O, we want to know the overall complex ion. Copper is plus two. Hydroxide is minus one, and there are two of them. H2O is zero. So two minus two, overall charge for the complex is zero. Okay. And the appearance of this solid is actually 
a blue precipitate. Okay, sometimes they use the word pale blue, but blue precipitate should be enough. Okay, so this blue precipitate, copper hydroxide, is the precipitate that you see when you add a few drops of sodium hydroxide or a few drops of ammonia. Here. Oops. Uh, this one. This pale blue precipitate is actually your copper hydroxide. Okay. So when we write down copper hydroxide, we write it as CuOH2. Done, right? Copper hydroxide. But actually, there's also four water ligands or water molecules around it. Will it be wrong if you don't write down the full formula? No, it will not be wrong. You can write down copper hydroxide, just CuOH2, okay? However, the problem comes when you want to balance the equation, okay? Imagine you did not have the H2O, okay? You don't have the 4H2O. How are you going to balance the 6H2O here? Okay, and it is wrong for you to say that all the 6H2O has been kicked out by the hydroxide. That is not correct because not all six. Only, since you're only adding two hydroxide ion, so only two water molecules will be kicked out. Okay, the other four stays in the complex ion. So this is an example of a partial ligand substitution where not all substitution, where not all your original ligands are being kicked out, okay? Only partially. Okay, <clears throat> so there's no use adding excess sodium hydroxide because this copper hydroxide will not dissolve in excess. How do I know that? It's written already in the qualitative analysis note. When you add sodium hydroxide dropwise, you will see the pale blue precipitate, which is the copper hydroxide, but it will be insoluble in excess, okay? However, in ammonia, in excess ammonia, the pale blue precipitate will dissolve, okay? So we want to look at what happens when excess is added, excess ammonia is added, okay? So when we add excess ammonia, the copper hydroxide solid will be uh, the ligands, okay? The ligands will be replaced by four molecules of ammonia. Again, the number for ammonia is four. Just now in chloride, also only for ammonia, right? Okay, so you have to remember. So for ammonia, will kick out two hydroxides and two water molecules. Okay, so the product um, will be a complex ion with four ammonia molecule, but because we have to maintain the coordination number of six, there will be two water molecules to sort of like stabilize it, okay? Because we do not have a complex ion with only four ammonia molecules. It must have a coordination number of six. Right, how do we balance the equation? Since we kick out two hydroxide ions, we will produce two hydroxide ions, and we've also kicked out two water molecules. So the products are two water molecules. Okay. 
So what happens? You go from solid to aqueous. So this is what we mean by the pale blue precipitate dissolve. Okay, you go from solid to aqueous. So the solid precipitate of copper hydroxide dissolves into a deep blue or a dark blue solution. So you see here, pale blue, pale blue precipitate is soluble in excess ammonia to produce dark blue solution. That dark blue solution is actually your copper with four ammonia molecules and two water ligands. The same complex you form when you add ammonia to your tetra, tetra chlorocuprate ion. Okay, as long as they have the same formula, then their appearance will also be the same. So copper hydroxide is a solid. It is a blue precipitate, okay? And it dissolves to give dark or deep blue solution. This is where it becomes important to write the nature, the appearance, whether it's an aqueous form or whether it's a solid form. If it's precipitate, then it's solid, okay? Uh, the coordination number is six because um, they are more or less the same size. Hydroxide, water, and ammonia are similar in sizes, okay? The only size that's different, which is larger, is the chloride. So that's why the coordination number is four for chloride, okay? Um, this is also considered as a partial substitution because only four out of the original six molecules has been replaced or substituted, right? So if I just uh, color, uh, color code them, ammonia as yellow. So you can see ammonia here, four of them has uh, kicked out two hydroxide ions or two hydroxide ligands and two water ligands. Okay, right. So that's when we add sodium hydroxide with concentrated ammonia. Next is what if we add drop by drop ammonia? Same thing. You see here, we add ammonia drop by drop, we get a pale blue precipitate. So that pale blue precipitate is our copper hydroxide. And then in excess, will give us the same uh, deep blue or dark blue solution, which is Cu with four NH3 um, molecules or NH3 ligands, okay? Right, the only difference is in the balancing of the equation, okay? If we add ammonia to copper two plus, right, we will get a blue precipitate and that blue precipitate is copper hydroxide, okay? Now, ammonia, what happens here is it's called like a, not so much a ligand exchange, but we call it a deprotonation. Ammonia acting as a base will remove the proton from two water molecules so that it becomes OH minus, okay? Um, because ammonia is acting as an acid here, okay? So, oh, sorry, it's not acting as an acid. It is acting as a base. So when ammonia accept proton H plus, it becomes NH4 plus. Okay, so that's why you got two ammonium ions. You may be wondering where is that ammonium ion? Because ammonia is acting as a base where it accepts proton. H2O automatically lose its H plus 
when H2O loses its H plus, it becomes OH minus. And then if you add excess, same thing happens, okay? You add excess ammonia, no matter how much excess you are adding, only four ammonia molecules will substitute four ligands, same thing. It will kick out two hydroxide ligands and only kick out two out of four water molecules. So you form copper with four ammonia molecules or ammonia ligands and two water molecules. Coordination number maintains as six. Here also coordination number maintained as six. Since ammonia kick out the hydroxide ions, you form two OH minus, kicks out two water molecule or two water ligands. So you produce two H2O and two OH minus, and you can check that your equation is balanced, okay? So here are some things that you need to remember. When you are adding chloride, you will replace four ligands with chloride. The coordination number will change. When you add a base, whether it's sodium hydroxide or ammonia, you will only substitute two ligands with OH minus, okay? That's how you got copper hydroxide CuOH2, right? You will not replace all six ligands with six hydroxide ions. When you add ammonia, you will only replace four molecules of ligands with four ammonia molecules. The rest will just be water. Usually water is there to make your coordination number become six. Okay, so here's what happens, all right? Just a summary. When you add hydroxide ions, okay? Hydroxide ion is in yellow. Only two will um, be incorporated into the complex ions, no matter how much excess of sodium hydroxide you are adding, okay? Only two will be added into the complex ions. The rest of the mo molecules or the ligands is just water so that your, your coordination number is, or it stays as six, okay? In excess of ammonia, you will replace four ligands. So this time my ammonia is green, okay? So ammonia will kick out two hydroxides and two H2O. So that four molecules of ammonia is incorporated into this complex ion and the appearance is a deep blue solution and it's not a solid anymore. Um, which one is that? NH3H2O. Is the OH minus supposed to be aqueous NH2O liquid? Uh, ah, yes, thank you. It should be the other way around. Uh, which one? Ah, this one. Sorry. Back to part B. Thank you, we for pointing it out. Uh, H2O should be liquid. Hydroxide should be aqueous. That's right. Okay. So please swap that position. Yeah, thank you, Wei, for texting me. Okay. Uh, right. So this is how it would look like. Starting with copper sulfate solution, where you would have a, usually it's pale blue, okay? If you add hydrochloric acid or any form of chloride ions, it will turn into a yellow solution. 
and the formula is CuCl42 minus, okay? When you add excess ammonia, you will get the deep blue solution. If you add dropwise, you will see the precipitate first, and then in excess, the precipitate dissolve to give you that dark or deep blue solution, which has the formula of copper with four ammonia ligands and two water molecules or water ligands, okay? The equation is given here. These are all reversible reaction, okay? So if you add, for example, you add water molecules to CuCl4, then it favors the forward reaction. It turns into blue, okay? If you add ammonia to the blue solution, then it turns into this deep blue uh, solution. If you add ammonia to this yellow solution, then of course it will give you the deep blue solution of copper with four ammonia molecules, okay? So it can go from here, it can go to here. Um, pale blue can go to dark blue, dark blue can go back to pale blue, Yellow solution can go to dark blue solution. It depends on what you add, okay? Okay, so this is um, what I have explained earlier as well. How can we get a copper hydroxide upon the addition of small amount of ammonia? This is not a ligand exchange because ammonia is acting as um, a base, okay? Uh, one question, is it reversible? Yes, it is reversible. But the equation that I write down in your notes, I write it as a single arrow, okay? Because sometimes in the question, uh, exam question, they want you to uh, write down the equation. So uh, write down the equation of the reaction for this change, for example, from blue to yellow. So you have to write it in a, a single arrow, okay? But the reaction, yes, it can be reversible. You can change the yellow solution back to blue. If you started from blue, you add chloride, you get yellow solution. But if you add water to the yellow solution, you can go back to the blue color. Okay, so that's a good question. Okay. <clears throat> um, right, so here, uh, equilibrium favors product site because H2O is a weaker ligand than NH3. So again, uh, even though it's reversible, you need to look at the stability of the complex as well, right? So is it stable or not? That depends on the next concept that we're going to look at, which is the stability constant. Okay, if you look in your notes, um, after ligand exchange is stability constant. So this stability constant can tell us whether the reaction happens or not. If the product you are forming is not stable, then it probably doesn't want to proceed. Okay. Uh, okay. Next is cobalt, right? I didn't realize that this would actually take um, long. Okay, so I'm cobalt is luckily cobalt no diagram, but the idea is the same like ammonia. Okay, so we'll try to go this, um, uh, go through this quickly, but also making sure that you can follow. Okay, so just be careful because cobalt and copper, it's almost same in terms of spelling, cu and co. Uh, so you better read the question carefully. Cobalt 2 plus actually means there are six water molecules around it, okay? So cobalt 2 plus originally is pink in color. Copper 2 plus is blue in color. It is a pink solution. Same thing, the coordination number is six, nothing different, okay? Um, I hope you know how to work out the overall charge of the complex as well. Uh, because water molecule is neutral, zero charge. So the overall charge of the complex ion is the same as the oxidation state or the charge of the cobalt ion, which is two plus, okay? So what happens when we add sodium hydroxide, right? So sodium hydroxide, 
it's the hydroxide ions that is acting as the ligand. The sodium ion would just be floating around in the solution. So same like copper, only two molecules of hydroxide or two molecules, two units, two molecules of hydroxide can be incorporated into the complex no matter how much excess you add. Okay, so that's why you add two hydroxide ions, you kick out two water molecules. Okay, the formula, you can work out the formula. You don't have the diagram in your notes. Actually, it's not necessary, but um, I have it here for you uh, so that you can visualize it. If we write down the formula, it will be copper with two hydroxide and there are four molecules of H2O, okay? And the overall charge is neutral, okay? Because copper, uh, sorry, not co copper, now see, I already made a mistake there. Cobalt, yeah, cobalt. And because cobalt is plus two, hydroxide is minus one each. So plus two, minus two, overall neutral. Okay. And this is an example of a partial ligand substitution as well, because only two ligands is being substituted substitution. The observation would be from a pink solution to blue PPT. Okay, if you want to draw it out, you can draw it out, but it it's not necessary. Okay, I show it to you just so that you can visualize and it helps you to write down the formula better. Okay. Okay. Next is, uh, so that's, how, that's the color change that you uh, should observe. Um, you see the precipitate is blue. So whenever you ask me, uh, this is why I always tell you when you ask me what color is the uh, precipitate, you have to be careful. Do not confuse the color of the precipitate, which is blue in this case, and the color of the solution, which is pink we want to look at the color of the precipitate, which is blue. Okay, next um, is the addition of ammonia. This time, unlike copper, six ammonia can replace six ligands in the original complex ion of cobalt. For copper, just now only four. Okay, so if you add in six, ammonia, that means you must kick out all the six H2O molecules in the original cobalt complex, okay? And uh, to write down the formula, it's CO with six and H3, and the overall charge is two plus. Same thing because ammonia is uh, neutral, zero, no charge, so the overall charge of the complex ion is the same as the charge of the cobalt ion. So the change in color would be from pink solution to brown solution. Also don't confuse this with copper because copper with four ammonia molecules would be a deep blue solution. This is an example of a uh, whole ligand substitution. That means all the six water molecules in the original complex ion has been replaced by six molecules of ammonia. Okay, so all of the six H2O ligands are replaced with 6NH3, unlike copper. 
So please make sure you uh, remember that, okay? It's not the same. And the color is also the, not the same. Well, because they are different um, formula, they are different substance, not the same chemical. So you would expect the appearance will also be different. Okay, so I want to quickly finish this. Um, so this is what happens during the change. Okay, you add small amount, you will get a precipitate, blue precipitate, which is the uh, cobalt, cobalt hydroxide, the one that we looked at uh, the first one in part A, and then in excess ammonia, where all the six ligands, whether it's water or whether it's hydroxide, all six will be kicked out by the ammonia molecule to form a brown precipitate, okay? Um, okay, and this one is just showing you the oxidation of the cobalt. This is not a ligand substitution reaction. This is some ad, um, additional uh, information. If you leave your cobalt with six ammonia ligands in air, the cobalt will be oxidized to cobalt three plus. Well, it will, it will darken, okay? But that's not a ligand substitution reaction. Lastly, what happens if we add chloride? In this case, same thing, just like your copper, only four chlorides will be incorporated into the cobalt center. And the coordination number will change from six to Four, the color change would be um, pink solution, which is your original cobalt two plus ion, and the cobalt with four chlorides. To write down the formula, it's COCl four with two minus, and since you kicked out all the six water molecules. In the product, you will get six H2O. Uh, the color of the cobalt with four chloride um, ions or chloride ligands is a blue solution. So this is a little bit different from the copper. Copper with four chloride ligands would be a yellow solution. Uh, coordination number changes from six to four for the same reason because chloride is uh, a big ligand, okay? Chloride ligands are larger, larger than the H2O, so only for will fit around the center, okay? Around the center, central ion. Oh gosh, not enough space. But basically the explanation will be the same as for copper, okay? Right, so that is all. There's a table um, with uh, th there's a summary for you to complete, okay? So I will go through that with you in the next lesson, all right? I won't do that now because I need to uh, end the session uh, now as I will be starting uh, my next class soon, okay? So really sorry for the rush and we don't have enough time to do the exercise and that's fine. I think we'll, we'll start off uh, the next lesson with some questions on ligand exchange or ligand substitution. Is that okay?